We have some Q and A from our chat, and this is very um it's gonna be very shadow run uh focus is very like rules stuff for 6e and cliff i know that you're kind of our, our resident expert on 6e so let me i'm gonna bounce some questions to you and you're gonna give that uh that arcology podcast style advice all right so number one this is from uh our user igorimus on our discord and remember uh if you want to give us questions for us to answer on our show uh leave them for us over on our discord at shadowcasters.network slash discord uh, and patrons get priority. Uh, so question one, there's three questions. One, how would you go about homebrewing humans to make them a mechanically interesting race choice for Shadowrun 6e? Alternatively, why are humans already in a good place mechanically? So this question is interesting because it's implying that they're boring, but in a good place mechanically. No, I think he's asking, like, if you don't think that they yeah. need to be interesting then why are they already in a good place okay yeah i don't think that meta type needs to be that important on the mechanic standpoint uh, i think we've seen that in the game sixth edition de-emphasizes i think a lot of those uh, uh mechanics attribute related um, um effects so in a way i think uh i think uh I think in a way um, the meta types have been made a little bit more uh, human like, I guess, in their range of stats in that in sixth edition, everyone just kind of starts out at one and you can spend your points to, to, to raise those attributes up and your, 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 your race determines which attributes you can have higher uh, than the, than the normal human maximum. So the humans don't have that maximum. They have the benefit on edge, which is already a pretty significant mechanic uh, pretty central to 6th edition, and having that edge boost was a really attractive draw to playing a human in 5th uh, edition as well. I know I know a lot of people played a human in part a lot because they liked that extra edge boost. So I, I guess I think humans are in a good place, uh, mechanically speaking, and I think you can do all sorts of uh, interesting, fun things with them. Uh, they... They don't have to be boring amongst, uh, you know, the cool people with pointy ears and horns. You can get all the body mods you want or cyber limbs. Uh, uh, there's also the idea of humans with surge qualities, which I don't think ever really been implemented in 6th edition. But, I mean, uh, talk to your GM. You can have someone with, who, you know, maybe they sprouted a tail or they've got skin that changes colors with their mood. Or uh, There's lots of ways you can make humans still interesting in Shadowrun. Um, you know, going with some just ideas from the lore and how how the setting has changed people or human 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 beings as well as metahumans. So I guess that's my take. Could could I take a stab as well? Yeah, absolutely. No. Go for it, Opti. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's here's my in lore explanation about why this would be the case. So uh, meta types are essentially humans who have had their magical origins unveiled, right? Which implies that since, you know, prior to the awakening, there was no discernible DNA difference, right? So there must be some sort of magical component to it, or else when magic entered the world, they wouldn't, you know, have, have changed. So if you assume that all metatypes besides human have some sort of magical thing inside of them that, you know, um, that makes them what they are as a, as a, meta type then you can assume that maybe cyberware doesn't work as well on them because of their magical components right uh, it, it maybe costs more essence whereas humans don't have anything particularly magic about them so maybe they have cyberware that takes less essence so that's that's what i would do to make humans mechanically more interesting is i would make for humans getting cyberware costs less essence hmm. interesting Okay. I think that's interesting that we're talking about um, 6E did kind of make all of the... It starts everybody on an equal playing field, gives bonuses, or like has maximums for things, right? Different maximums, but for the most part, everyone starts off on an even playing field yeah. with a couple of different things. I think it's interesting that 
you don't that someone might not want to play a human because it's not as mechanically interesting to them. But at the same time, I'm like, well, if it's not mechanically interesting to you, then it doesn't matter. I mean, if it's flavor that's interesting to you, if you're interested in being a human rather than the others, I mean, that's really the only reason why you would want to. But if you're looking at it for a mechanical thing, then it's not a big deal if you don't play a human, play something else. Right. Playing a human, you already play a human in real life. Play something uh, else. The costs <laughs> are actually pretty, you know, Mm -hmm. pretty similar across the the species now cool all right so uh question number two should grenades have damage reduced from the core book or is there high damage value to represent the chunky salsa rule uh so first let's talk what is the chunky salsa rule and then second your thoughts on grenades the chunky salsa rule is the idea that if you have an explosion within a controlled where within a enclosed space uh, the force of the explosion reflects off the walls and the ceilings to do more and more damage. You get these uh, incredibly huge damage codes if you have uh, grenades exploding. It's almost always used wrong in Shadowrun because if you have like a, a direction for the explosion to go out, uh, then it basically, you don't have chunky salsa. The chunky salsa is to refer to the... Uh, the effects on the organic material within the space and what, what it rep, what it represents afterwards. So, um, right. So throwing so yeah. a grenade in an elevator. So yeah, unless you're in a place that's already completely closed up, there's no outlets at all. The chunky salsa rule is not going to come into play, but, um, yeah, I did find that, that given the, um, the, that armor doesn't reduce damage at all. Uh, you just have your body to roll to soak and a lot of the damage values of the weapons are lower than in fifth edition uh seeing such an incredibly high damage number for the ground zero damage value on grenades i found that a bit um a bit much such that among my list of house rules for sr6 i have reduced the ground zero damage for grenades by two i feel like the other damage values for the near and close ranges those are fair and uh it's it's also not entirely likely that someone is going to be at ground zero because there's plenty of options to move a little bit in um uh, but man I, I feel like grenades are one of those things that are so easily abused and having them be so op uh for that ground zero damage yeah i am inclined to to dial that back okay I agree. That sounds correct. Um, finally, number three, also regarding balance, what would be a good house rule to implement to put analytical mind on the same power level as similar qualities? So are you familiar with the analytical mind quality? Yeah, it's a, yeah. if I remember point wise, it's a three karma quality and uh, basically lets you get an edge on any test that you make that you're using logic on, which is pretty huge uh yeah that seems very for, broad yeah especially for say um a magician who's uh, a hermetic magician who uses logic plus willpower to resist uh drain um that's a way for them to soak up edge pretty fast um but honestly i i like it i feel like the karma cost is is under pointed what i would honestly do is add more qualities of the same name and maybe have them cost a little bit more karma. Uh, maybe make it so that you have to pick only one. I'm not sure, but uh, for I remember for we we um, for a fundraiser or some sort of event that we did for Shadowcasters Network, we made up uh, six edition character sheet versions of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things I came up with is I designed a quality for myself that I called Creative Mind. And that gives me edge when I use uh, intuition-based tests. So that would be handy for someone who does a lot of perception or, I don't know, intuition-based stuff. I just thought it made sense because I do a lot of art-related activities. And it, it seemed like a fun uh, adjustment to the quality. And I think it's in the spirit of 6th World Edition to to make up your own variations and you know do the house rules that you want to do that make the game flow how you want. So... So yeah, uh, my my way of, of of doing that is just open it up to more possibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, I would probably not lean into something like um, agility, where you're going to be using that for all the combat skills. Um, maybe not reaction. I don't know. I'd have to think about it for other ones, but I think for say 
some of the less combat focused things where you have less opportunities to gain edge, um, bringing that in is a good idea. Yeah, I think basically just making taking analytical mind and just making it not apply to combat uh, would be the way I'd fix it. Okay. All right. Cool. So hopefully that was helpful. Thank you, Igorimus, for the awesome questions. I uh, hope this helped out anybody who is watching as well with their Shadowrun 6th edition stuff. And these are, honestly, I should say, these are opinions too. So, yeah, I mean, course. if you want to do it differently, you know, just because I said to do it that way, that that's just that's just my inclination. So, I think, yeah, two out of three of these questions were very much just, what would I do? This is what I would yeah. do. <laughs> mm -hmm. And actually, before we, uh, before we go, Cliff, can you just like tell, just in case there's anybody who's watching this video uh, that they don't, they're not familiar with your ecology podcast. I mean, you do a lot of uh, discussion about sixth edition, fifth edition, Shadowrun in general. I mean, why don't you go ahead and tell us about the ecology podcast? Oh, sure. Uh, the Arcology Podcast is a what's a long-running podcast about Shadowrun. We talk about Shadowrun. We have actual plays about Shadowrun. Uh, we cover the various editions that have, we've encountered over the years. We started with fifth. Uh, we still play a lot of fifth edition, but we also discuss and play Anarchy and sixth edition. So yeah, it's a podcast largely about Shadowrun, though. So we also cover Shadowrun adjacent topics from time to time as well. And uh, yeah, both of uh, my other fellow guests or co-hosts or whatever here have been guests or co-hosts on the Arcology. Oz for some of the Anarchy episodes, Opti uh, somewhat more recently last year. Uh, Daryl in the chat, if he's still here, he joined me recently for um, some uh, discussions of a recent, sh well, somewhat recent Shadowrun release, Firing Squad. It's not as recent now, actually, I suppose, but... <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's a. Uh, you can find it wherever you can find podcasts, uh, the Arcology, and it's um. It's it's been a lot of fun doing that over the years. It's kind of how I got started doing all this. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it's technically how I got started too, because I was like, no, oh, I want to do what Arcology podcast is doing. Then I started doing my thing. Then I met all of you, and then here we are. <laughs>